Hey guys and welcome to Prop Creation for Production and Cinema 4D. I'm Voz and I'm working on the Bowls project over at C4D Cafe. And right now I'm just going to be explaining to you how it would be nice if the project, if the props were organized, so that it makes it easier to work with them when you're, you know, compositing a scene. Now let's open the horse that G the Jim Reaper made. Very good horse, but few issues with the actual scene. Now, firstly. We don't want stuff like hair, like floor, lights, skies, and stuff that's for environment. Because when you merge this into another scene, you don't want these settings to conflict with the ones you already have. Also, in your render settings, uh, get rid of the global illumination and turn on auto light because that just helps for quick passes. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to discuss is the fracture object, which comes with MoGraph. So if you have MoGraph, use the Fracture object. What does it do? Well, see right now, if we have this object and we click on it, uh, all the objects get selected separately. However, if we make a Fracture object from the MoGraph menu, a Fracture, and we stick all this stuff in there, when we click anything that's in the object, it selects the whole group. It selects the Fracture object group. Which means when I want to move it, when you know when you're in a scene and you want to select a bunch of objects, you don't have to select the whole thing. You just click on them and then you can move them wherever you want, which is highly useful. Okay, now that we've got that set, now if you don't have a fract, if you don't have a MoGraph module, then at least put it all in a null and make the null some kind of uh, circle or where is it circle, uh, and you know make it in the right place so we can grab it easily so you know so now when we select it we have also all selected also you know makes life easier for when we're working okay now that we've got, set, got that set up we're assume well I'm gonna assume that you have uh, the, the fracture object and work like that but it still works with a null now uh, to right now this course is very high poly so it's rather inconvenient to use it in a scene because if you have a couple of objects that are the same poly count level, well, it starts lagging the viewport and it's very annoying to animate, to you know, to move cameras and stuff and you have to hide stuff all the time and it's just a mess. So what you do is you build a proxy object, uh, which is basically just uh, which is basically just a cube. Well, it's a couple of cubes, but you start off with a cube and you make it encompass an important part of the model. Then you copy and paste it, and you make it encompass another important part of the model. You make it squash it. Then you once again keep copying and pasting it. You can rotate it. Actually, just scale it. Also, good idea with your model, keep it aligned to the y-axis, like, you know, here, see, it's slightly offset. Uh, get the model, oh, that's because I just moved it, sorry. But yes, basically, keep the model in the middle so that, you know, we don't, so we know where everything is. So when you import it, it's, you know, yeah. Okay, so we make shapes, we make them about the same, you know, so as the general, so it keeps the general shape of the object. And then see when we hide the horse. Uh, well, if we make this wider, it's wider, and it's lower, we can still tell it's a rocking horse, you know. If you, obviously, if you want, you can make it more detailed, so it's even clearer. If you think there's still going to be problems with telling what it is, you can, you know, add some loop cuts throughout the horse. Um, go to point mode, move these, so, you know, it looks like the base of the horse. Obviously, you can do the same thing for the head. You don't have to make separate cubes. You can just make it all out of one. But, you know, keep it low poly. So when we look at it, we're like, yeah, that's a rocking horse. Okay, good. So, and then you know, it makes it, you know, makes the viewport a lot more responsive. Now, once you have the cubes, uh, group them into an object, LG, and call it proxy. Now, put the proxy into the fracture object. Call the original object high res the fracture object whatever your object is so horse and now see the high res is hidden viewport and then the proxy will be hidden in the render so now when we're in the viewport we select we can move it we can rotate it we can 
turn it sideways, and then when we render, we get a high-res horse. See? That way, you know, makes everyone's life easier. And obviously, try to keep these points aligned, so uh, the bottom of the horse is, you know, so the bottom of the proxy object is aligned with, where is the cube? Yeah. Is aligned with the bottom of the high-res model, so we can place the proxy without enabling the high-res model, it just, you know, once again, makes life easier. Okay, that's pretty much it for now. I've got another tutorial coming up about making objects more dynamic. And, you know, I'll see you then. Keep up the good work.